What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to the ITO Report. This is where culture classes and commentary resides. Before you do anything, click the notification bell. But before you click the notification bell, <laughs> subscribe to the channel first. It's free. And then click the notification bell. And then like the video. Because the more you like, the more my video gets promoted. Shout out to all my subscribers. I appreciate you all. I really, really do. Um... Today is Saturday. I just came back from doing errands. I want to shout out to this Caribbean restaurant. If you're ever in New York area, which I reside, and you're ever in Queens, go to The Door. That's what it's called. The Caribbean restaurant, The Door. They have wonderful food. Very professional. What I like about this restaurant is that they, I've seen them bloom and progress i remember when i first discovered them just passing by i never i have to this day i haven't yet went in and sat down and um dined i will do that one day but i've had their food through corporate and different things and today my fiance had got me um some plantains because that's all i really wanted because i got some like mexican food from somewhere else but um I was impressed with the customer service, the packaging, everything. If you want high quality food, go to the door. They are phenomenal. But like I said, when I first discovered them, they were like, they look, and this is no shade to the door. They were like a hood spot, a warm, welcoming hood spot, and it's always packed. Now, when you see the door, this is probably about 12 years later. They're, out, they're outside establishment as well as the inside, I heard. But the outside, I know, is, looks immaculate. It looked like it could be a restaurant in the city. And I love that. So shout out to the owner, whoever owns the door. And shout out to all the people that work there. Because the customer service and the food is everything. Yes. Um, This past week. I decided that I was gonna watch a bunch of documentaries, which I did. I watched the Russell Simmons documentary. It's not called Russell Simmons documentary, so don't quote me on it. I'm just telling you guys. I mean, I can't even think of the name of it, but I watched it. That documentary was on HBO Max, if I'm not mistaken. Then I watched um, the Epstein documentary. Woo, Jesus. Then I also watched the Malcolm X documentary. Rest in peace to Malcolm X. I love Malcolm X. Excuse me for what he stood for. Oh my goodness. Where do I start? Um, the Russell... The Russell Simmons documentary. It was very informative as far as Miss Dixon... She is pretty much a staple in hip hop behind the scenes. Her face looks very familiar, as well as some of the other women I've seen. And um, I believe something happened. I just need, I don't know, I think it's in that documentary, something else was missing. You know, you gotta be careful when you do documentaries because you're gonna, you wanna know, you wanna see some hardcore evidence, you wanna see some facts. I will say I do believe Miss Dixon. I, I I do as well as um, some of the other girls. They all had similar stories, and it's just I don't know my my women's intuition, you know. But it it just seems like something else was missing. It, it needs to something else needs to really lock in the truth that's just me however i am glad she shared her story and i hope that she is not lying which i don't take her as lying i i don't so i have to say allegedly but let me know your thoughts on that if you watch the documentary now what i will tell you is that i notice and with all these documentaries that i watch is that people with high 
power uh people that are in authority and is successful when sometimes it's so baffling because you can't picture that person doing that that people will sweep it under the rug like it never happened i've seen that i've experienced that like people don't want to deal with it and i will just keep it there but with that documentary um and regarding russell simmons and it, something else needs to be added to that. But for Miss Dixon, I do believe her. But something else, like we need, we need some more of a something receipt, something. Now, the Epstein documentary. Oh my gosh, cringe! I was cringing. <laughs> I was like, yo, something is wrong how we as people have to work hard in high school, college, get, work hard in high school, then work hard to get to college, and then from college, work hard to get your master's, or if you're going to do a PhD, even your bachelor's, you know, just, just, college is not easy. People think it's all easy. It's not. You just... The, the key of it all is to stay focused. That is the main thing. You have to stay focused and really be like, I really want this. I really want this degree. As well as hopefully have some financial help. But in this situation, with Epsteinies, <laughs> I, I'm just like, and I said Epsteinies, I'm trying to figure out how somebody get from he don't have he dropped out of, very they said he's very smart but dropped out of college works at a high prestigious high school was a high school where the rich kids are at with no experience just because off of somebody he know and then from there leaves go to bear stearns and work with no experience and then they do a paper trail and find out he doesn't have any degrees that he lied about then he uh, mastermind and manipulates and just was, I guess, so clever that he ends up connecting. And uh, I can't even think of the guy name, but the guy that owns Victoria's Secret, uh, American Eagle, and the list goes on. And then he started uh, with the accounts dealing with that and just make so much money like just build this whole empire guys that to me shows me do you need education to be successful it's, it's kind of like you don't really need ed education to be successful you don't need education to get where you need to get it's how you go about getting it My best friend always told me that don't think that these people just got here off of sheer talent and they went the right way. They had to pay the cost. And now I really realize that is the truth. I feel bad for those women. I believe them. All of them. Because this guy did not, he did not really hide it. He just didn't want to deal with it and didn't want to talk about it when he was being questioned in court. But the major kick of it all, guys, is that he was helped by the hires, the higher ups. It was a cover up. This documentary, I mean, for the most part, a lot of this information that I saw, I knew. And then some things I didn't know. But this this documentary was explosive. I just want to know, why was Naomi Campbell in that black book? I want to know. I want to know why she was in that black book. <laughs> 
as well as a bunch of other people. Why are they in that black book? What, what's the real reason for that black book? Oh my God. Chris Tucker. I love, I used to love Chris Tucker. And then to see a picture of him on a plane, a documentary, they claim nothing happened, but I'm, I'm like, yo, this situation is so weird. Does this explain why Chris Tucker, excuse me, just disappeared out of thin air? We loved him in Friday. And then I was wondering what happened to Chris Tucker. Where is he? And I think he played in maybe about two or three movies or so here and there. Maybe five, handful. And we don't see Chris Tucker anymore. This is all allegedly. They said nothing happened on the Africa trip, but... It's just, it's hard to, for me to believe that these people, Chris Tucker, Naomi Campbell, whoever else, didn't know what was going on. Now, Malcolm X. Rest in peace to Malcolm X. I love Malcolm X. I love what Malcolm X stood for. He was not playing. Just... Oh, man. I watched that whole documentary. That was a thorough documentary. Thorough. It just explained from stages to stages. The focus was who killed Malcolm X. That is the main focus. Wasn't about Farrakhan. Didn't even mention Farrakhan. And you know what? I seen a video where they interviewed the guy that was responsible for doing this documentary with Netflix in regards to Malcolm X, who killed Malcolm X. He said, "Listen, it, we want to focus on who killed Malcolm X. It's about Malcolm X. Want to? We don't want to focus on Farrakhan because if we focus also on Farrakhan, even though he's an instrument in it." Then Farrakhan would be clapping back and so forth, which I agree with the guy for saying that. It is true. It just baffled me that here is a guy, a highly intelligent man, who they were watching since before he even got out of jail and reformed his life. That is amazing to me. And the pressures of being a leader. Th guys, that is what a leader is supposed to be. Malcolm X. That's a leader, straight up. No holes bar. No pulling, no punches. Straight facts, straight to the point. OMG. And also, shout outs to the life and legacy of his wife, Betty. Shabazz? Yeah. She was beautiful. Beautiful, smart, and just dealt with a lot. Yo, that documentary was so to the point. Here we go. Higher ups have nine informants that is in that mosque in New Jersey. That is mind blowing. And they were upset because his right hand man, which I think he's still living to this day, I can't even think of his name, gave him CPR, gave Malcolm X CPR after they done killed him. And then this also blew my mind too, because he talked about Elijah Muhammad, how he got like eight women pregnant, young girls at that. It's like, if you look at all these documentaries, guys, they all, like, kind of similar. 
with with the government, the higher ups, the police, the cover ups, people in power. Listen, power, power and money is a hell of a drug. I never will want to be in a situation like that where I have so much power that I, I want to mess up people's lives or, or just feel like I could treat people any kind of way or take advantage. No, I'm wondering to this day, how do people sleep at night? I wonder how people sleep at night. Oh my goodness. Yo. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know your thoughts in regard to the Malcolm X documentary. You know, so like I said, really quickly, before I forget. Like I said, mind-blowing was Elijah Muhammad having kids out of wedlock from young girls, secretaries. And I guess when him and Malcolm X got into that huge confrontation, you know, about views, he lived in a house that was given to, given to him. And Elijah Muhammad them sued him I'm like, how do you put a family and a leader that has helped to build your community out on the street with four kids and a one on the way and a wife? How do you do that? I was like, wow. Wow. And then on top of that, here we go. The guy that did this documentary, he's reaching out to OGs to talk about who killed Malcolm. And they don't want to have nothing to do with it. No, why are you, why are you bringing that up? No, oh, oh, such as... Oh. I think we all deserve the truth in knowing about our history and knowing about a leader, a high functional, intelligent leader that people were threatened by. We need to know what happened to Malcolm X. We need to know the truth. And to have two guys in jail that did not do it. So they their lives got snatched up from them. People just worrying about convictions. That happens for years and centuries. Oh, boy. I was an emotional mess when I, after I watched that documentary. I've read the Malcolm X book. I've read, I've seen Spike Lee movie. But this documentary, it's tons of documentaries and articles and stuff on Malcolm X. But this documentary was really excellent. It broke down a lot of stuff. It showed a lot of facts. It even showed pictures of Malcolm deceased. Oh man, that's that. It showed film of them trying to interview his wife after. A husband, oh man, and she's just speechless. She couldn't really talk. How can you talk? Oh man, that was deep. Listen, excuse me. If you can, and if you're into documentaries, please watch all the documentaries. I'll probably get the information and put it in the description on what the name of the documentary is because I don't know them full by ver I, I don't know, the, excuse me, I don't know the names completely off the head right now, but I would like for you to watch those documentaries and tell me your thoughts on them. But 
if you really think about it, after you watch the Russell Simmons documentary, the Epstein, as well as the Malcolm X, all good documentaries, but the Russell Simmons is something, like I said, is something missing from there. But I would say the best out of all of them was the Malcolm X. The guy took 30 years of researching and everything. And um, it was pretty much straight to the point. Nevertheless, in all of them, somebody didn't want to deal with the truth of the person that did what or brush it under the rug or they was protected by the higher ups or the government or whatever <sighs> let me know your thoughts guys if you have any documentaries that you think that are good that you think I would like to watch let me know in the comment section but these documentaries were mind blowing. I was like, oh my God. <sighs> Shocking. So yeah, documentaries is something that I'm into. And I'm gonna be reading, not online though. But I'm going to be reading books. I have actually about a bunch of books that people have given me, gifted me. I bought myself. And um, I'm going to read, start reading. You know, they always could say, if you want to hide something from people, um, put it in a book. And that is so true. At this point in my life, I am 40, 